Right. What's your what's your wasp situation, Doug? Uh, there are none, and the doors are all shut. Because I think it was last podcast, wasn't it, when we were talking, you got invaded by a wasp, and I could hear it coming through from your microphone was picking it up, and it sounded like the size of a of a of a Wellington bomber. The thing sounded colossal. Um, and then after the podcast, after you chased after it and tried to smother it with a pillow, mm. you then. You then, well, that's exactly what happened. I mean, <laughs> you know, I'm not entirely sure. I was trying to sort of frighten it outside. Um, Smother but, it with a pillow. Okay, you know, accuse accuse vegans of murder of, of oh, creatures. That's, that's the, that's the that way night. to go, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> fine. But this time on a Saturday morning, um, <laughs> afternoon. Um, <laughs> but jumps. I want to know your wasp situation, because then you text me afterwards and you said the wasp is back. And it sounded as if as if you couldn't get rid of it. Uh, yeah, there was a bit of a there was a bit of a moment. I had to, do, um, you know, that kind of like it's a weird thing you have to do where you have to like entice a wasp, but not too close, so you can get the the, the sheet of card or paper and the and the glass to trap them in. Oh, that's how you do it. I thought. So yeah. What did you need the cushion for? Well, the cushion was because it had got up into um, part of the light fitting and I had nothing to stand on. So I was kind of trying to push him down. Uh, OK, right. OK, I understand a bit more. So you haven't had a problem with the sheep since then? No sheep. Why am I thinking of sheep? Wasp. That's it. Uh, it's Freudian, isn't it? Um... <laughs> <laughs> no, no problems with uh, with wasps since then. In fact, I think that may have been the last wasp of the season. Um, Whatever. For this year, for, for everyone as well. Nobody saw a wasp after so, I did. I see so the, the first one wasp... and I see the last one. It begins and ends with me. So the last wasp, you're privileged to see and nobody else is going to see. So. Yeah, yeah, essentially. I'm sure that's not how it works. Uh, I'm fairly certain it is. And because of the way this uh, this conversation is going, I've just realised we're probably already recording, aren't we? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, I, I don't tell anybody now. I just, I just click record and just see what bollocks they start spouting. Yeah. I mean, I had a plan and everything, but there you go. Uh, Did you? Do, you? do you want to start the plan off? Because I just want to be a wasp, really. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. We'll I'll, I'll probably find a find a more apt moment to bring something in later. Just I, I think that, you know, if you have something to start with, there's a bit of a surprise. You're kind of like, I just want to come in out of nowhere. But then yeah. if you've missed that cue, it's best to leave it because there might be a moment where you're like, ah, now this is the this is the time, you know. Right. So basically what I've got to do is to stop you talking about that. I'm just going to talk about anything which is surreal so that you can't sort of chime in with anything sensible. Yeah, um, or, 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 I mean, I could talk about something else. So you I know, don't know what you were about to talk about. I mean, we, I thought we, we, we've kind of set it up. So do you just want to talk about it? No, I'll leave it. I'll leave it and see if it becomes more opportune later. What I will tell you about, though, um, is because uh, obviously the other day I had to pop and grab the mic microphone from you. Yeah. Um, on that day, as you know, I was coming up to yours after a half day at work. Um, and then going from yours to have a haircut. Yes. So did you have that haircut? I did. It's look, look, it's lovely. Uh, lots well of it gone. Very, very age appropriate. Um, <laughs> but yeah, because I left the office at just gone two in the afternoon. I was like, right, I've got to get back to there. I've got to walk half hour to there, probably stay and have a chat, then walk back, then have the haircut. Um, and I didn't I didn't do like an emergency toilet before I left work. So Good. I got onto the bus and um, I had probably about five minutes, five minutes of ride time. And uh, then this uh, this voice in my head. No, actually, no, this voice in my tummy. Yeah, uh, <laughs> this voice in my tummy went like. It's time. It's poo time. <laughs> And, you know, we've all we, we've all been in this situation. And if anyone who does happen to listen sits there saying I've never been in that situation, uh, you're a liar um, and your self-loathing is disgusting. Um, so, <laughs> well, 
just just to say before we go from the the the, the narrative of the voice in your head, the one in my head sounds like the the uh, announcer from Mortal Kombat. Okay. You can carry on. Uh, <laughs> oh, we'll see if we can work that into a post story. Um, finish him. Uh, so, <laughs> For so all yeah, victory, I was, I was there, and, <laughs> and my tummy just suddenly went. Oh, it's it, it's time to do a poo. You, you need to do a poo. Nice. And I, I thought to myself, I've got like 35, 40 minutes of this bus ride left. Then I've got half an hour of walking, half an hour of standing outside, another half hour of walking, half an hour haircut time, and then probably another half hour journey to get home. So I was like, what can I do to hold in this poo? And I And I had this kind of almost existential dilemma because I was like, there are there are literally two choices here which both could end up awful um and the first one is just to go like just sit here do not let any part of your lower body move at all not even a quiver of the bum hole um and just hope that it goes away and then when it's time to return on it later then you can do it and the other option, which is the the darker one, which is the one that nobody ever wants to talk about, uh, is what, what, what's what's darker, the pool or the situation? Um, a little from column A and a little from column B, I guess. Okay, um, fine. So I thought to myself, the other option is to is to approach this from a more practical level. Now I'm on a bus. Bear in mind, it's about two 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 thirty in the afternoon, so I am surrounded by old people. Now. The thing with getting older is Careful. your body starts to do things when you don't necessarily want it to. And I yes. thought to myself, like, well, you know, I might not be the only one in this situation right now. So I kind of started thinking what happens in this situation. I realized what you have to do is you have to just go like, right, well, actually, I'm going to settle myself. I'm going to straighten myself out. I'm going to work out kind of what the possibility of size might be of, of, of this poo that's going to come and then I'm going to approach it with dignity and soil myself so I kind of went right well this is it then isn't it so I need to prepare myself I need to be dignified because this is my body and I may be doing this in a public space but it's probably it's probably time to just let it go. So I sort of had a little bit of a in my head warm up of what you're going to do. And I started, it, it was weird. I started to become very proud because I was like, if I'm going to do this in a dignified way, I have to know that I am doing this and it's my choice. So I became really, really proud of this situation. I started, it, it was like a roar going on. I was like, you know, Christ, this, this podcast is, is taking a turn. I am about to do something that most people would consider disgusting it's entirely natural i'm going to do it in a public place surrounded by people it's time and i kind of you know puffed out my chest like a gorilla i got myself ready and i squeezed anyway it just turned out to be a fart so uh so that was that. christ what an end. anti climax <laughs> You're setting that up. I thought you were going to war. I mean, Jesus, we're only like eight minutes into the podcast and we're already talking about you shitting yourself on a bus. Yeah, I know. And uh, also, um, in a, in accordance with our standard practice of no editing. Yes. That's on your podcast now, mate. Well, thanks for that. It's your poo now. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm not taking the poo, mate. I'll take the story. I'm not taking the poo. You can have that. You know, that's... that's I, I can't believe that's how that story ended. I expect you to say something like, I don't know, you had an epiphany, you ran off the bus, jumped into a bush, oh, no. and then you met I mean, a rabbit. You then, you went down a hole, you met, you know, this whole brand new world, a bit Alice in Wonderland-ish. I'm not, I'm not ashamed to say that I have in the past jumped off a bus to do a poo in a bush. Um, Good man. But back in those days, I was living in Froome, and there was much more countryside on the on the journey, on the journey yeah, back. Yeah, you know, you get in Bristol. This, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, if, if if I needed to jump off a bus and do a public poo somewhere appropriate, I'd have had to wait till after seven o'clock so that it could go via Canesham. Um, <laughs> but unfortunately, unfortunately, that wasn't on the cards. Um, if anyone from Canesham is listening, move. 
Um, so, <laughs> so far we've had no downloads in Kingston, so we're all right. <laughs> it's offensive Saturday. Um, <laughs> yeah, no. what is wrong with you? Jesus. <laughs> Just... I woke up on entirely the right side of bed. It's fine. I've had a couple of cups of tea. I'm drinking a fizzy mango juice. I've had some tomatoes on toast. I'm in a good place. Nice. Good. <laughs> It sounds like you are as well, mate, to be fair. I mean, that that, that was a very exhilarating 10 minutes of, of yeah. the podcast there, fellow. Thank you for that story that took about at least six of it. <laughs> and then went nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> so, the day, so the day after that was, uh, I believe, your 11-month anniversary of long COVID. Yes. Which, quite yes, frankly, I... I'm a bit offended because I went and got that haircut and then you didn't have a fucking party. So <laughs> I would have just I'm fallen asleep in it, mate. It would have been a shit. It would have been a worse party than that story of yours. <laughs> you know, everybody would have come over. I wouldn't have stood next to anybody because I'm shit scared of people. And then I would have ended up falling asleep. So yeah, it wouldn't have been good. And then you would have drawn stuff on my face with permanent marker because let's face it, all my mates are fantastic, but ninety percent of them are bell ends. Um, you know, I never really did the permanent marker thing. We used to antique people. Do you ever do that? What? What's that? So, so when they've passed out, you, you basically make sure that they're fully passed out and there's nothing that will wake them at all. Right. And then you just absolutely coat them in flour. <laughs> so that so that when they stand up, they look like one of those old antique sort of like not porcelain, but rough looking little sculpture statues that your nan used to have on the side. Right. Kind yeah. of thing. Uh, yeah. So that's what we used to do. Um, it was absolutely terrible, and I and I always absolutely would not let it happen in my own house. Um, <laughs> but anyone else's <laughs> furniture was fair game back in those days. So yeah, that was... never did that. Never did that. No, draw drew on people's faces, gave them ink poisoning, but we'd never waste food. <laughs> <laughs> it was flour, man. I mean, I mean, you know, if you can you've make got, cakes like, from flour. You can make cakes with flour. You could even, if you wanted to be fancy, make something that involves starting off with a roux or something like that. But who's going to fucking do that with a hangover the next day? Why, why, why did kangaroos come into this conversation? No, a roux, like a little, like sauce base kind of thing. I have no idea what you're talking about. That, I, 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 to be fair, I did start the baking conversation, and now yeah. I've lost it. I've lost any sort of <laughs> standing in that conversation I had because I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> if I'm completely honest, I only learned what it was about nine months ago, and I've just been saying it a lot ever since. Um, was it watching Great British Bake Off? Uh, no, it was it was it was something Heather told me um, about. She's really good at cooking and that kind of thing. So, so I was a bit like, uh, all right, this is this is something new to learn. Um, I I do have some suspicions she may have told me about it more than nine months ago, um, and I've just been rolling on it for years. Um, but but. <laughs> It is, At least you admit it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, yeah, it's been a it's been a funny old week, really. Um, I suppose you've had a full yeah. week. You've had an adventurous week. I mean, you've got your haircut. I got and... my haircut. Interesting uh, QAnon stuff happening in the press. Do you know about QAnon? Yeah, I. I... I, I did start to read up a little bit on them when they came to when the, the Capitol building in the US was being overtaken. Mm. But the problem <laughs> when they came with to it prominence. is <laughs> Yeah, when they sort of, you know, when they reach their peak. The problem <laughs> with it is, Doug, is whenever I read about people like that, mm. I start losing brain cells because the people that ultimately do it are inherently thick as fuck, in my opinion. Yeah. Ultimately. So therefore I'm not gonna let myself dumb myself down because I, I have got enough brain cells to lose, mate. What with you know, drinking slightly more than what you know anybody should do, and the rest of it just being because I'm old. Um I'm not gonna waste any more brain cells on, on people like that, mate. No, no. no what interesting fair. story have you got to tell us about well, Kimo? Just just in case anyone who is listening doesn't know about them, uh, they're basically a far right conspiracy theory um movement who are centered on they base themselves around false claims, don't they? That's the whole thing. And they've got um, um, an anonymous individual known as Q, uh, who essentially believes that a cabal of um, uh, Satanist paedophile cannibals are operating a global child sex trafficking ring, um, which conspired against Donald Trump while he was in office. Um, 
No, he needs to conspire against that. Arsenal, he pretty much did that himself. Didn't he? <laughs> well, I mean, that's the thing, isn't it? Um, but yeah, they're kind of um, yeah deranged basically. But they they seem to have quite a lot of followers. So uh, just a few things they've sort of claimed that because they do these like predictions of things that are going to happen, um, and uh, they ultimately don't don't occur. Um, so they they had um, the first prediction I think was um, about Hillary Clinton. She was going to be arrested in an attempt to flee the country, uh, flee America. Um, that never happened. Um, they uh, they said that people targeted by Donald Trump would commit suicide on mass in February 2018, and uh, nobody of note committed suicide that day. Um, there was another one around the same time where they said there'd be a car bombing in London that didn't occur. Um, the uh, uh, there would be uh, an assassination attempt on Joe Biden on his inauguration day that never happened. Um, he, he was quite peacefully inaugurated, actually. Uh, yeah. To be fair, um, there was a there was a weird one which seems like ephemera in a way, but it, it's one of my favourites that they basically said that Trump's military parade. Um, would never f- be forgotten, um, and then the parade itself was cancelled. So <laughs> that, was, that was a that was a really oh, special lovely. one for me. Um, uh, what else was there? Mark Zuckerberg would leave Facebook and flee the United States. He's still the CEO of Facebook. Can I ask um, a question, please? Yeah. Why is everybody? Why have they got a fascination with everybody fleeing? Uh, well, they basically think that all of these people are enemies who are suddenly going to realise that their time is up and run away. Um, but it, it just doesn't happen. Anyway, the interesting one this week regarding QAnon, and it's absolutely fucking wonderful, um, is that they they believed uh, that JFK, as in assassinated in 1963 yeah. President John F. Kennedy, yeah. um, was going to emerge it could come back proving that he faked his death or maybe just come back from the dead i think probably that he faked his death um and uh announced that he would be running as potential vice president um alongside donald trump for president who they believe will be reinstated um and a load of them actually went and gathered to wait so there are these videos wow. online now of people like hanging out in the street, like waiting for it to happen. Um, I read something where one of them was asked if they'd seen JFK that day. And I think she said that she hadn't, but she had seen Robin Williams. <laughs> I don't, I don't, <laughs> don't think would be hanging around with you fucking guys. Um, well, to be fair, yeah. those two those two are quite interchangeable, aren't they? You know, so yeah. give, them, give them the benefit of the doubt there, Doug. But a new a new thing came up um, following it um, a couple of days after it didn't happen um, that that they actually believe that JFK um, is living among us, um, but he's actually disguised as Keith Richards from the Rolling Stones. <laughs> oh, I right? saw that. I saw See, the headline. And I thought, no, I'm not going to get sucked in. <laughs> so, so consider that um, JFK would if he was still alive, be about 104. I think it's 104. Yeah. Um, and uh, so they <laughs> have they gone for Keith Richards just because of how decayed his body is? You know, like... He is I mean, he's, not preserved a bit. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, to be fair uh, to these conspiracy theorists, there is a lot going on underneath the surface of Keith Richards that none of us will ever be able to fully comprehend, mostly that down to the sense. lack of millions and millions of pounds to be able to take that many drugs. Yes. Um, but imagine if it was true. Consider it. Like, the Rolling Stones formed in 1962. Yeah. JFK was assassinated in 1963. Yeah. So Keith sat there, um, decides to himself, you know what, if this band takes off, I'm not going to be able to keep living being two different people at once. So I'm going to have to kill one of the personas. So then he goes to his mate, Brian Johnson. No, not Brian Johnson, Brian Jones from the Rolling Stones. Yeah. uh, Who um, uses his alter ego, Lee Harvey Oswald, um, to fake an assassination. Um, Yeah. So far, this is all making perfect sense. 
and that means that JFK is killed and Keith can carry on being the guitarist in the Stones. And there you go, he forges a massive career. And and now we get to this point. But I quite like that idea that 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 Keith and Brian from the Rolling Stones had like these alter egos. Keith's was JFK, Brian's was Lee Harvey Oswald, because they both get killed within that same space of time. You yeah, know, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, um, unfortunately, Brian Jones himself did sadly die uh, in a swimming pool accident of some kind um, a few years later. Um, which which was unfortunate, you know, because if they hadn't done that in the first place, then he might have just carried on as Lee and lived out his life as a soldier with PTSD, which would have been just, just lovely. Um, and uh, Jack Ruby, uh, just some fat bloke. That's all. <laughs> so, yeah, I think I think I'm, what I'm hoping really is if I get those ideas out in the public enough, they'll be chopped up and, and thrown out there in some kind of viral way yes. and it will inform the QAnon uh, conspiracy theory to uh, to to a much further extent where people start to think like you know what this guy said it on a podcast he might be Q and if people think I'm Q then imagine the power I would have I mean that would be incredible I could actually go to these people and start making them actually do good things that would be amazing yeah there's there's different levels of power though in there mate there's power which you can do good climate activists to a point or uh, people like David Attenborough you know and then there's power where people don't know how to do anything with it Donald Trump uh, Boris Johnson and then there's QAnon power I feel mm. as if all you'd be doing there is herding lemmings do you um, want that responsibility because lemmings are quite fiddly yeah I mean I mean now that you know the the the, the truth is out and the computer game's been debunked and it turns out they don't just hurt themselves. Um, mm. I suppose we should give the lemmings a break, really. Yes. Um, but I mean, I don't I don't think that was on my agenda. <laughs> Not for this week. I mean, you've had your haircut done, right? Yeah, so yeah. I mean, just I'm, calm I'm, it a bit. Yeah, exhausted, mate. Absolutely exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not excitement for one week. At least leave it until after Christmas, right? <laughs> you know, nice. we don't want to be doing too many things not at once, not at your age, mate. <laughs> but yeah, I mean that that Q and on lot. I mean, the the whole thing just fascinates me because each each theory gets more and more incredulous and bizarre after yes. the other. And I think I think part of it is down to you know mistrust of governments, and I don't have a problem with that because you know not trusting governments is is pretty much my mo, like. I, I have an issue with so many of them. Um, yeah. But I think also it comes from the fact that a lot of people are really, really desperate to have something to believe in. And as we're seeing more and more um, nowadays, um, you know, religion and particularly Christianity are, are dying a really slow and agonizing death in the Western world. So I think these people want to cling on to something that they can believe in. Um, and because they're so desperate to believe stuff, it'll it'll basically be anything. So, you know, if these QAnon guys like came out with like a ridiculous theory, you know, as they do, you know, um, they would just believe it, whatever it was. You know, it's it's similar to the whole kind of like David Icke thing, like there's a lizard cabal of Jewish people and all of that kind of bullshit. Of course, none of it's none of it's true. Um, that has been gone for years, though, isn't it? I remember when I. Uh must have been late teens I learned about mm. lizard people in America yeah well I mean I mean Ike <laughs> Ike devoted his life to it he um he <laughs> he gave up on a perfectly good football career um, <laughs> to go and to go and do that I he was an average player at best um but uh <laughs> But yeah, he, you know, that that was what he was going to be doing. He was going to be a footballer. He, he started playing and stuff. He wasn't doing too badly. And then he suddenly came up with all these theories and devoted his life to being being this kind of weird, weird guy. It's, it's, it, it's just all kind of like very similar to like the kind of like cult stuff that you see, you know, like David yeah. Koresh and all that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. And, and it, it it's kind of bizarre. But I think it is just that people are desperate to have something to believe in because they're struggling to believe in the things that they used to because there are more and more people who don't believe in it anymore. And combine that with a with a distrust of, of, of government institutions and distrust of authority, which I don't think are bad things, but 
there are healthy ways of distrusting that and unhealthy ways of distrusting Very. that. Yes. Um, and, and they just go down these absolute mad rabbit holes, you know. I mean, it's no wonder in the in the late 90s when The Matrix came out, like so many of us just went like, I don't think that's true, but could be, you know. Yeah, I don't know, could do. Could because be. we're all kind of falling away from from religion and, and, and that kind of thing as a, a, a as a nation and as the Western world, you know. Um, you know, it, it, if you said, you know, 50 years ago, that the majority of people in Britain would be growing up completely non-religious for their entire lives, people would have laughed at you. But it's it's just the way we're going now, you know. Um, so yeah, as a result of that, we have people that think JFK is Keith Richards from the Rolling Stones, and that's fucking wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is, isn't it? I mean, I I, I don't agree with anything QAnon do or say. I'm not, you know, not right in any way, shape or form. But mm. I do think that that is quite hilarious and that is quite lovely that Keith Richards has been masquerading as as um, J- uh, sorry, JFK has been masquerading as Keeth Richards for all these years, selling, you know, selling uh, selling out stadiums, multi-platinum CDs, doing music videos, no longer he's thinking you fools, I'm the ex-president. <laughs> you know, there is something really nice and lovely about that, isn't there? There really is. Um, even if, you know, on his, his dying breath, he's going to say, I'm JFK, guys. Lol. Yeah. You know. The thing, um, the thing is, he's chosen the wrong guy as well, hasn't he? Because Keith Richards has consumed so many drugs and drunk so much booze over the course of his life that if he said that on his deathbed, everyone would just be like, oh, Keith. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what Keith. Guy. Another one. <laughs> he's classic, he is. That's classic Keith. <laughs> but I think you have got a point. Uh, I've certainly noticed since moving to Bristol that uh, I think if people are religious, they keep it to themselves a lot more than what they used to. Mm. And there aren't as many religious people around. Um, I, you know, I was brought up religious and I, I sort of I, I sort of went away from the church at like 14, 15, I think, 15 or 16, something like that. Mm. And I, I've never looked back, you know. Um, I, I think it isn't as important as it used to be for a lot of people. What you tend to find is people tend to flock to a church if they've sort of lost their way, if they thought they need spiritual guidance. But now there are, you can build pretty much anything into a religion, I feel. I mean, yeah, you've yeah. now got spiritual gui- spirit, spiritual, um, spiritual guides, haven't you? And people go to them, yeah. they get their palm dread, they get everything else, and that's their form of church. I think mm. the word church has sort of evolved into into something much wider, though. And it, it yeah. does encompass a lot more, you know. Like, you could you could turn around and say, because there was that thing years ago, wasn't it? That's uh, Jediism. That is yeah. a religion, you know? That's, it reminded me of something else, though. I was going to mention the, uh, uh, and if we're honest, quite offensive um, concept of the pastafarian um you know the people that they, these people said they were pastafarians and they were wearing like colanders and pasta dishes oh, just on their pasta. heads and stuff like that um but yeah but 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 some of them actually tried to work out specific religious rules around it to try and enforce it as a religion which um you know ridiculous but but yeah, people do that. Yeah, Jedo is the thing. What was it? Jedo was to do with the census, wasn't it? It was, yeah, it was. People put down um, if you're Church of England or agnostic or whatever, and, and then there's always an other box, isn't there? And people would write Jedi, and yeah. then it turned out that millions of people were actually writing Jedi, and I think it it sort of grew legs, didn't it? Really. Well, there's a, <laughs> there's a thing. I don't know if it's true or not, but people say it. It might just be one of those things that people say that isn't true. Um, yeah. But people said that if enough people say that they're Jedi on the census, it has to be recognised as a genuine religion, which I don't think that can really be true, can it? Because I don't know. I because, don't know. because, you know, once this is out there and the census people know people are doing it, they know that it's not a religion. So they can't yes. say this is a religion that's not one. Like that, that would be that would be entirely illogical wouldn't it but but that's what people i seem to remember people saying at the time like if you put jedi down then then that will have to be accepted as a religion you know and it's it's a weird thing to sort of think about you know because there are loads of people like sat there going like ha 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 isn't that funny we could put down jedi and people will think that my religion is jedi and you're sat there thinking like but what if you're an atheist yeah. surely it's more important for you as an atheist to say well i don't believe 
than oh, oh I, I do believe in this <laughs> cheeky you know <laughs> seems a bit ridiculous and, and just yeah. entirely fucking redundant as well you know I love Star Wars as much as the next man but but you know I wouldn't I wouldn't base my my life around it or any kind of religious views around it because that would just be be mental because because not all of them are good well, I, I don't know. I think I think they're all excellent, right? I don't think there's a bad one. And um, I, I I think this goes back Holiday to Holiday Special. I've not seen that. 1978 Star Wars Holiday Special. That is an absolute fucking shambles. Um, it's just I don't even know how to explain it. Just just watch it. Okay. But like even those Ewoks movies, you know, like Caravan of Courage and Battle for Endor and all that. Because there's others, you know, there's all these like weird ones, like that, that. Well, a few weird ones, but like the main lot, yeah, I could, I can have fun with them all. I don't think they're all good. Yeah, but... they're good. Yeah. All right. It's, it's, it's <laughs> the thing is with any of them, isn't it? It's the same though. It's every story gets taken too seriously, don't they? It's a oh, story yeah. about people in space. Enjoy it for what it is. You no, know, don't I get dissect that. it, yeah. rip it apart, and go, it was shit. No, and I'm not one of those, like, sort of toxic fans. Like, they piss me off really? quite a lot, you know. Be- no, 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 because I actually, I, I had a, a conversation with someone a long time ago where I was saying, like, people are absolutely fucking furious about this, but, like, fuck them. It's not their story to tell, yeah. you know. If they don't yeah. enjoy it, then they can they can, they can move away from it. That's absolutely fine. I'm not one of those people. But, you know, if, if you're being, you know, legitimately critical of films from just a normal viewer perspective you know what films are better than others and where narratives fall down you know if there are plot holes if there are failings you know or if something just happens to look a bit shit you know you know that's there um so yeah I would I would still say there are a couple of the Star Wars movies that that aren't that aren't great one or two that are maybe bad I will still watch them a hundred percent you know I'll still watch all of them you know, because I'll have moments like that. I mean, there's certain like franchises, aren't there? Like where where you'll watch all of them, even though you know a couple of rubbish and that Tremors. kind of thing. You know, <laughs> Tremors, I, lo- yeah. I love Tremors. I goddamn love Tremors. It is so cheesy, but it's graboids, giant worms. It, yeah. It's all you know, it's amazing. And you think of the A, the the A list and B list uh, celebrities that have been in the Tremors films. It's amazing. <laughs> Yeah, well, it starts Uh, off with uh, Kevin Bacon, doesn't it? it Um, And interestingly, he hasn't come back for any of the sequels, but he did star in a pilot that they tried to do for a TV TV. series version. Yeah, I really wish that succeeded. So, so I'm kind of like, have have the people making the Tremors movies just not asked Kevin Bacon? Because he'd probably do it. You know, if he's, if he's know. happy to do the series. And it, I, don't, I don't think it would be about his fee either, because I know that um, Kevin Bacon and his wife actually got caught in um, some kind of, um, uh, I don't know if it was, I don't think it was, you know, sort of like a pyramid scheme type thing, and they lost a lot of money. Oh, Avon. It's, uh, Avon. <laughs> it's a pyramid um, scheme, isn't it? I guess so. But yeah. but yeah, ultimately, I, I think after that, they sort of said to themselves, like, right, well, we'll just take the work on. You know, we've got a family yeah. to feed. Let's let's, you know, as long as it you know fits with scheduling and stuff, let's let's just do it. I mean, he's not on those EE adverts for nothing. Oh, no, and consequently, I don't have an EE contract for nothing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, t- to be fair. He's probably getting paid more than enough for E. But I don't know what the what the reason was for him not to come back. But I do know a lot of celebrities will star in the first one or two, and then they yeah. won't go any further. A bit like Christopher Eccleston with Doctor Who, because they didn't want to be sti- uh, they didn't want to be typecast well, in actually, that particular role. With Eccleston, there was actually some stuff going on behind the scenes that he didn't agree with and a sort of bullyish oh, culture that? as well but but your point does stand there are yeah you thank know, you. there are Arsenal. people that <laughs> but there are, yeah no, but you're right though you know there are people who'll do something yeah. and then they'll say you know i don't want to 
I don't want to keep coming back to this all the time. I don't want to get typecast. I want, I want to be able to go out there and be creative, which is why after the fourth Police Academy movie, Steve Gutenberg moved on. Um, <laughs> but this is why I, I take my hat <laughs> off to Jamie Lee Curtis, because I think she's been in most of, if not all, of the Halloween films. Uh, first one, second one, uh, then seventh for a moment in the eighth and then two more so that's a total of six so how many have they made uh i think there's more hang on so it's halloween halloween two (laughs) halloween three season of the witch halloween four halloween five halloween curse of michael myers uh halloween h2o halloween resurrection so that's eight uh then they did those two rob zombie movies the rob zombie ones so that is 10 uh and then the 2018 Halloween and then Halloween Kills. So yeah, 12. So she's been in six of 12. Although that is very that's impressive happened. recall. You need to get a bit of a life. Uh, yeah, that, I mean, that, that's not bad. That's not bad, mm. is it? She's been in quite a lot of them. Don't yeah. put her face. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love Jamie Lee Curtis. She's, she's amazing. Um, she's she's one of those, one of those actors that I just kind of... I, I enjoy everything she does, whether or not the movie is good, because she's got something about her. You know, uh, it, it, it's like she's a, she's she's great at what she does. She is a great actor, but also she's got like a real charm to her. It's like those like, first like couple of moments either. that yeah, those first couple of the mo- moments that you see uh, Jamie Lee Curtis in Trading Places, Never you're seen. just Oh, right. Oh, you should. It's. Uh, I, I'm not a film buff, man. I don't know if you noticed, but I'm not a film buff. No, it's a, it's a classic, though. It's a classic. It's it's one of um it's one of Heather and I's what we call gateway Christmas movies. Um, oh, so they're movies that are set in or around Christmas, but aren't specifically about Christmas. So, so it's all... not like a gateway drug. It doesn't get you into Christmas if you're not into into Christmas. Is that what you're saying? Uh, no, it's just our sort of preparation right. because I, I, I love Christmas. Heather loves Christmas. And, you know, we we get to November and we're like, oh, we want to start, you know. So so we'll do the gateway Christmas films and that kind of thing. Oh, just a quick aside. Um, wh- when I was walking up to yours the other day, I walked past a house um, not too far. There's from a few, mate. And they, they had Christmas decorations outside. And oh. I... I felt a bit bad for how my brain operated in that moment because of obviously everything with COVID and, and how it's been for a while. I couldn't work out if these people had just started a little early or if they'd done it last Christmas and now someone was dead. So, and they've just... Do you know what? You know, there are a few times I've thought that about. Not about that. I, weird, I don't know which house on about, but I don't know. But I, there are a few. There are a few sort of houses around the place. There are a few in Swansea as well that are a little bit dilapidated. Yeah, and you see the Christmas decorations up um, mm. all year round. Yeah, and it could just be that maybe they they can't get a ladder, maybe they're less mobile, or maybe there's a genuine reason. Yeah, yeah. But that's where my brain goes. God, it's trying yeah. to knock the door. Are they dead? I mean, last yeah. year, last year because it was you know incredibly depressing. Heather and I did put up our Christmas decorations um, outside at first, um, sort of halfway through November, and then we sort of gradually did the inside bit by bit and then got up the tree at the start of December. Um, so, you know, that was a bit earlier, but I think, you know, that's a bit of a misnomer because it was a, it was a sad year. Uh, but yeah, anyway, back to Jamie Lee Curtis, there's, there, there is something really, really quite charming about her when she's in movies, you know, and I, I don't know what it is. There's just, she just seems to be able to kind of like, without looking at the camera, almost wink at the viewer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Something, <laughs> something really nice about that. Um, and she's and she's sassy, and yeah. who doesn't like sassy? You do need a bit of sass in your life now and again. Absolutely, it is needed. I so talk to me about your t-shirt because I know the band's meant to be Joy Division, and it's really <laughs> bugging me. For the past forty minutes, I've been seeing Roy Division on your t-shirts. Now I know Joy Division. I'm a, I'm a fan. Yeah. What is that, Roy Orbison? No. Uh, so it's it's Roy Division, and it's the classic picture of. Joy Division stood together, yeah, yeah. but if I can get close enough to the camera, uh, it's all breast shot. Roy Keane. Roy Keane. Footballer. The footballer, yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, he actually played for Manchester United, who I absolutely do not support. Um, but you know, he's a he's a he's a real character. Every you know, so 
and I just I thought it was funny. I don't really buy jokes. a pun as well, I suppose. Yeah, I don't really buy joke t-shirts because (laughs) I don't really buy joke t-shirts because I go off the joke really quickly. But you know, just something about this one kind of I was like, yeah, I like that. Every time I sort of pull it out to put it on, I go, you know. I sort of said a little sensible chuckle. For a while, I wondered, oh, it's just me. I haven't got my glasses on. It's me seeing an R instead of a J. Um, mm. And then after a while, if you, I don't know if you noticed, know, I've been looking down at your T-shirt quite a lot going, it's really bugging the shit out of me now. What does that mean? Um, well, so, yeah, thanks for clarifying. I've been looking down at, so. um, <laughs> to, to clarify, I am also a fan of Joy Division. I'm not wearing this in any way to, to mock Joy Division because I absolutely love them um, and New Order as well and most of the most of the manchester post-punk scene um and the sort of factory records madchester hacienda thing that's like really kind of my sort of thing like that that, sort of arty music yeah i guess arty um in some places yeah but yeah i I like all that stuff um but yeah roy roy king that's the guy nice Nice nothing to do nothing to do with the awful awful band keen um Oh yeah, they were a thing, weren't they? They were a thing. Um, their singer's face had no edges. Like, you know when? Yeah, yeah. You know when someone has like a really soft face and you can't work out where what any of it is. He he just kind of looked a bit like melted cheese. Um, (laughs) It was was odd. Uh, It just melted. (laughs) What consistency Uh, cheese? What cheese? Cheddar. Because um, cheddar, when you, when you grill cheddar, brie. it goes soft, a bit orangey, soft. doesn't it? Soft brie kind of thing, I think. Sort of melty brie, a bit sticky. Yeah. Got a bit of a crust over the top of it. Yeah. Nothing against Slightly him as a discount. person. I'm, I'm, I'm sure he's lovely. Now I've said that, it'll come out that he's a fucking pedo or something. But like, I don't um, even know who he is. I know, I, I've heard of the man. Yeah. Too. I don't even know who the singer is. Uh, it's not I, my style, see, mate. No, it's not. It's not for me. I don't. I don't like it at all. Um, I remember though, there was like a really weird fucking thing with it. Um, and a uh, Kasabian, who were, was sort of big at the time, they they were slagging off um, Keane, saying that they were everything that was wrong with indie music at the time um, because of their absolute commercialism and just being sellouts and all that kind of stuff and I think they even went down to the front row of a Keen concert and like booed them and stuff like that and then a couple of days after all all these like nasty things that they were saying about Keen happened Kasabian started a residency at Earl's Court so I'm not really sure what the fucking sellout thing was about there I think it's just a load of bullshit but it's, I get it's quite, so annoyed you with get that a lot of that though don't you you get like bands yeah. like trying to seem more sort of like punk than they are and actually it yeah, just yeah. makes them look like elitist wankers so sex pistols ah oh, well i love punk i do love punk but i've never really been a pistols fan i i get why it was kind of a big deal at the time but i think there were lots of other punk bands you know around the same era who who are much more relevant to what the actual scene itself was and represents you know um and it's not to yeah. not to like slag the pistols off particularly i mean i will I have some opinions on certain members of the band, um, but but like you know, there's there's a lot more in punk to me, and you know, I mean, the, the Pistols were basically a manufactured band to some yeah. extent. You know, I mean, they were a band, they were already a band, and that's fine. But obviously, McLaren came in and went like, this is what we're going to tweak, this is what we're going to do, this is what we're going to change, um, you know, and it was all it was all record company bullshit at the end of the day you know and there's no reason for people not to celebrate them and not to say it's an important moment in, moment in punk history that's that's absolutely fine but i think when people you know make out like they're you know the very core of punk i think that's wrong um yeah. because there's much more to it so buy a fucking sham 69 record and shut your fucking mouth you know <laughs> no i i just i'm gonna go back at a term you said sell out mm. I hate that term. That term gets bandied yeah. about so much and it gets used often in the wrong way. If yeah. you have 
my opinion is if you have whatever your art is, if it's music, if it's art, if it's painting, if it's photography, whatever it is, if you have worked your ass off for years to get somewhere and hasn't, and then all of a sudden one of your albums or your photos or your paintings, whatever, sees the light of day and everybody starts going crazy over it. And then if you start recreating that art in a similar sort of way so that people will buy it, I have got no problem whatsoever. Everybody no. deserves a payday. And well, I hate that thing. term sellout. That's the thing. I mean, we're, li- we're living in and stuck inside um, this capitalist society that we have to navigate. So you have to try and make money some way, you know. Yeah. And, and if, you're, if, if what you're doing is music, for example, um, and that's how you're making your money, if someone comes up to you and you're a couple of albums in and they say, we're going to give you a fucking million to sign to our label you'd be stupid not to you know it's it's absolutely mental to sort of turn around and say no to that you know because you know after after a few years of doing this a lot of these artists have you know families like why would you not try and earn more to support your family I mean I get sometimes people are annoyed you know if a band says yeah we're never going to sell out and then we do because it kind of like throws back against integrity and that kind of stuff quite often the bands that get accused of selling out are the ones that never preached any kind of gospel against it I always find that weird you know like when at the drive-in signed to um what was it Grand Royal Records and released Relationship of Command which was massive um so much bigger than their previous work um in terms of sales and you know how how popular they became um loads of people started calling them sellouts and i just thought that was such a weird thing because there was never any point where at the drive-in said we will never sell out you know it's a weird I thing to accuse people of when they've not been against it you know it, it is a lot of it's jealousy I a think lot of so. it's jealousy you know because they are successful um in, you know I've experienced tiny bits of it with the little YouTube channel that I've got. But mm. I think if you're looking at, not looking at that, if you're looking at music, people are jealous. People are yeah. ultimately jealous. They, they have, they're not able to, to either learn an art or to generate themselves money so the person can become self-sufficient, like a band, like an artist, like a painter, whatever. Choose whatever art you want. Um, and there is, there is a, there's always an element of jealousy and it's awful. It's absolutely, yeah. it's, it's, it's abhorrent that you're literally saying to somebody, no, don't earn money. Don't yeah. provide for your family. Don't pay taxes. Don't do this. Don't do that. It's, it's, it's awful. Absolutely also, abhorrent. I also think from like a, a listener perspective, you know, there are a lot of people that say like, oh, I won't listen to that band anymore because they sold out. And I just kind of find myself thinking like, why would you, why would you want to limit yourself when it comes to art? Like, I want to consume all the art I possibly can. I mean, yeah. that, that's the most exciting thing in the world, you know, like, why, why, why would you want to say like, oh, I can't listen to this? Like, you know, it's, it, it goes back to that same thing as like rock kids saying that they won't listen to pop music. Well, fuck off. A lot of the rock music you listen to is pop music. And actually, you might find you quite like some of it. Like a great pop song is a great pop song and it's fucking undeniable. You know, I've, I actually once had somebody say to me that they hated pop music and they were wearing a Weezer T-shirt. And I was just like, where, where do you think that comes from, man? Like, I mean, Weezer, yeah. Weezer, they are a rock band, but they're also a pop band. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's amazing. Weezer are incredible. I fucking love them. But like, you know, it's just this kind of like bullshit, like building a wall around and like denying yourself access to certain other things that you might otherwise really really like and have fun with and i don't see it's, why why anyone would do that it seems it's so elitist yeah it's it's it, there's so many great like, my, my, my musical genre usually sticks around the heavy metal black metal and death metal mm. sort of genres but i absolutely love michael jackson's music i love yeah. sia you know i've mm. got a great respect and love a lot of christian aguilera's music especially the spanish yeah. stuff you know, I, there's a lot of stuff I do like. The one thing I can't stand, and I, I, I will, I will tell you this because I've been playing it a lot, and I cannot stand this genre. It's jazz, um, especially modern jazz. I absolutely hate it, and, and I have been playing it a lot recently on my bass and on my guitar. I've been playing it a lot because I hate it, but I appreciate the musicianship that goes into it. But jazz. my God, it is eye-pullingly awful. Uh, I quite like. A lot of jazz um mm. but there i i'm not one of these pretentious fucks 
when it, when it comes <laughs> to jazz. You know? Well, there are, they are, aren't they? There, there's oh, so oh many God, of them. Yeah, and like, I'll listen to jazz and I'll do it by myself and I'll be like, oh, this is cool. Um, yeah. And and it's, you know, it's just something that I enjoy, you know. Um, from a musical perspective, as you're as you're sort of alluding to there, you know, there's some phenomenal stuff going on in it, which, oh, is, yeah. which is mind blowing. But like, Absolutely. ultimately, whether or not you enjoy music is down to how it sounds when it hits your ears, you know. And that's that's where that comes from. It's how stimulated you are by it in that sense. But yes. there are some real like pretentious jazz dickheads and people. The the worst ones are are people who go like, oh, I. Uh, I didn't think I liked jazz for years and then one day I just got it and <laughs> and they'll look at you like it it's almost like you know like when a woman says like oh I don't want children and then someone goes like you'll change your mind one day like it's really patronizing and it's like telling people that they don't know themselves and don't know their own minds so I wouldn't be like that with people but I think there are people who are like that with with jazz and and it, it it does kind of wind me up a bit because I'm sat there going like I really like jazz like don't fucking put that person down because they said they don't like it don't patronize them why not come to me and talk about jazz we could have a good time instead you're being an arsehole do you know what I mean like it's a really yeah, yeah. sort of weird thing but I, you know I do like I do like a bit of jazz you know when you said like what I cannot abide. I was I was really waiting. I was just like, I want to know what this is so bad. <laughs> you know, you like you really want someone to say like something fucking controversial. Like, yes. like I know a lot of people love jazz and a lot of people hate jazz. If you'd like, you know, come out and said like something that absolutely everybody loves and nobody will put down, like that would have been like the most fun in the world. Like just to be, like have a slamming indictment of something that absolutely everybody loves. You know, like if if you just like went off on one about Dolly Parton, I'd just be like, what the fuck, man? What the fuck? Like, she does annoy me. She does annoy me, but I've got to say she has, she has had a, a terrific great. musical career. Her personal life probably not so much bless her, but her musical career has been oh, no, phenomenal. No. Dolly's great. She's she's an activist. She does loads of really good stuff, man. It's it's just worth reading up on the things that she does. Also, she's um I I if I remember rightly, she's part of the reason that Buffy the Vampire Slayer got on TV. So there really? you go. Yeah, she was sort of involved in the production company in some way. Um, she sort of like I believe she kind of like pushed for it to to get made, which is pretty cool. Really. Yeah, that is pretty decent. Fair play to her. No, I, I, there's not very many genres of music I, I don't like, but jazz, I mean, I've been playing a lot of jazz bass lines, and it, they are interesting, but as soon as it all comes together into that do 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 sort of noises, I just think, oh, fuck off. i got no time for any of that bullshit. Um, <laughs> and then it's like, you know, it's getting as genre-laden as heavy metal is, isn't it? There's a genre for everything, even if... You know, somebody uses, somebody plays um, a tea strainer in it. There's a new genre, you know, it's, it's tea metal, you know, and it's it's the same as jazz, modern jazz, this jazz, dance jazz. It's like, oh, no disrespect to anybody that plays it. Musicianship is incredible, but you can fuck off. I think, I think it's one of those, uh, and again, it plays into like the, the pretentious thing, doesn't it? But it's one of those genres that kind of like informs other genres. Like oh, absolutely. In, in yeah. metal, in metal, you know, there are a lot of bands that are very technical and you know take a lot from jazz, which like which technical is, metal. Uh, yeah. So, for example, um, <laughs> I know it's like gent and stuff, but but like Meshuggah take a lot from jazz. Um, yeah. Animals as leaders. Uh, Don't know them. They, they're sort of instrumental technical metal stuff they oh, right. do a lot um dillinger escape plan obviously oh, yeah, they were great really fucking jazzy but then dillinger are a weird one because actually i remember when i first started listening to them back in the uh, i guess early to mid 2000s so i was like fuck me this is this is amazing this is the shit <laughs> um and you know i was just like jazz metal jazz metal that's you know that's that was my whole like thought process yeah. with it um and you know when i look back on it now because i still listen to them they're one of the few heavy bands that i do still give a lot of time to there was a lot more going on in there than jazz and actually 
in terms of like the way that they operate, I think they're, I mean, there's definitely a lot of metal in there, but I think they're much more rooted in hardcore punk than than anything else. I mean, that's where they've sort of come from, I think. But, you know, yeah, I mean, jazz, jazz like manages to sort of infiltrate so many different genres and styles of music. It's, it's crazy. Um, but, you know, again, with the pretentious, side of it you'll get like pretentious musos they'll be like oh yes well jazz is the uh it's it, it's it, it's the very beginning of, of everything it started it's, jazz. Uh, years yeah. and, and that's where it comes from fuck off it doesn't it came from some fucking monks just going in a fucking room with lots of acoustics that's that's where your fucking music came from mate don't give us some bullshit about jazz that's a 20th century thing yeah, I'm glad you share my. Well, you probably don't share my hate for it, but I, you show you shared a bit of anger there. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, it just winds me up. It really winds me up. I can I can genuinely appreciate when I when I watch somebody play jazz, I can genuinely appreciate the musicianship. Mm. But yeah, that's where it stops. My dad took me years ago to a jazz club for my 18th birthday. I don't know why he <laughs> thought that would be a good idea, um, and he took me there and. Oh mate, it was it was awful. I just sat there. I've never been so angry in a gig. Ne- genuinely never been so angry. I always go to gigs and I've always been I always want to enjoy the band, so I'll try and get myself as close to the front as I possibly can. Mm. Listen to the music and I'll watch everybody play and how they interact with each other, the drums, how it locks in with the bass and how the bass locks in with the rhythm guitar and everything else. It's it's, it's mesmerizing. And I, I I love it. And I but I sat at that jazz gig and I just wanted to hurt people. I, I got so angry. Um, I, I I just couldn't understand what they were doing. I gen- genuinely couldn't. And it just made me so angry listening to it. Um, and uh, yeah, it's not it's not been a genre I've ever I've ever I, you know I tried to get into Coltrane. I've got a I listened to a few albums by by, by what's his name Coltrane. Um, oh, I'm not. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's just not for me, you know. And that's fine. Not everything yeah. is for everyone. Well, I mean, that's that's exactly it, isn't it? You know, it, I think, you know, quite often there's a thing that people get offended when you say you don't like something that they love. And yeah. and I, I find that weird. And, you know, I, to, I, I do do that. Not to, filth, I must admit. Yeah. I mean, not to hark back to the last um, last one of these we did too much, but I am talking about you, Chili Peppers fans. Um, <laughs> they've had some great music out there mate oh I fucking hate them I cannot stand them I, they just oh no no I fucking I fucking hate the Chili Peppers do it, I, do, I do, do but it, the thing don't. is the thing is if I ever like say that in front of a Chili Peppers fan the fucking rage they get into man like they get furious I don't know what it is like why, why are you being so protective of this band I'm just saying it's not for me it's still yours if you want it like don't don't fucking get mad at me but maybe maybe it's just something on your part that really it's underneath terrible. it all maybe well maybe actually they're getting angry because they don't want to admit the truth which is that this band that they so say love actually fucking suck maybe that's the whole problem <laughs> Let's let's talk about more about how you hate RHCP. So what is it about them that you can't stand? Because I'm enjoying this anger. Let it flow, Doug. Let the dark um, I mean, I mean, I, I, I mean, the initial the initial problem I had with them started with absolutely fucking everything they do. Um, Hang on, sorry, so... I'm going to stop you there. There's an ice cream van outside my house. It's November the sixth. Yeah. Don't you just find that a bit weird? It's pissing down with rain, no, and there's an ice cream no, van. No. The guy who owns the ice cream man sensed that someone was talking about the chili peppers and felt the need to bring some better music into the world quickly. <laughs> they put his little thing on and came oh, rolling fast. Hey, no, I just, I just, I just hate. Sorry. I just think they're fucking awful, to be honest with Not you. Not good enough. Like, more constructive. I, th- I mean, it's he, he can't fucking sing to save his life. Like that's fucking awful. Like. All that kind of fucking shit that he does. I don't even know what it is. Like, but it, it just it's just rubbish, you know. Everything's I you know, as musicians, you know, I'm not gonna shit on them at all. Like Flea's a great bassist, Chad is a fucking incredible drummer, Fluciante is probably one of my favourite guitarists when I listen to his stuff outside of the chili peppers. Um but but yeah, just when it all comes together, I just fucking hate it. I mean if 
if they took the rock element away and chucked out Anthony Kiedis, they could probably be a really good funk band. But when they do this whole like funk rock thing that they do, I just find myself going like, oh, fuck off. You know, just just fucking do something else. You know, like, in fact, fuck what me and John agreed on. Don't make money. Fuck off. Just stop it. <laughs> how how dare you fucking assault my ears like this? And of course, as with everything, there's always an element of bullshit because there is one song I like. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's it's not a single. It's not a big one or anything like that. It's just a nice little yeah, soft terrible. song um, that's on. No. Oh, God, no. Fucking hell. When that album came out, I thought everyone was a cunt. Like, <laughs> <laughs> That's my favourite album by them. Yeah, but that doesn't mean it's good. Like... I've I've got my favourite pieces of shit, you know, like some shit's better than others, but like that doesn't make it a great album, does it? It's just a load of fucking wank. When that album came out, everyone talked was talking about it like fucking like music had hit its highest peak and was now going to be over and there was never going to be any more music because how could you do better? And I just thought it was absolutely ridiculous because all they were listening to was basically a fucking sound manifest of a mountain of poo. It was just fucking awful. Awful, awful, awful. The actual song, Californication itself, is one of the most boring fucking pieces of shit I have ever heard in my entire life. It's just, it's just rubbish. I'm a massive REM fan, and when I listen to Everybody Hurts, I think to myself, like, oh, that's a dirge, it's boring. You know, there's a point to the song, fine, okay. But, like, Californication, I mean, that takes being boring to another fucking level, doesn't it? You know? What about other side? Other side. Oh, what? Take it on the other side. I wish they fucking had. Um, <laughs> what about road tripping? Oh, is that that stupid acoustic one? Road tripping with my two favourite allies. Yeah, yeah. That's like, um, I mean, that that's just one of those, you know, like when like a band who are known for doing like sort of like rock songs, like suddenly go like, oh, look, we're going to do a fucking ballad. Like, like, that's what they did with that. And basically, they paved the way for, like, bullshit, like, fucking, hey there, Delilah. Like, just fucking get out. Just don't so do that kind of fucking shite. Hang on, I'm going to... Right, so what about Can't Stop? I just Googled a few now. These are the, the top ten Red Hot Chili Pepper songs. Other side is in there, mate. So I, I, believe, I believe Can't Stop is the one that I did the vocal impression of earlier. So I think you already know how I feel about that. And other side you don't like, but people have rated it number two. So I don't know where who I don't know who's wrong here. The internet. Yeah, but then like know. the top the top song by a shit band is still a shit song by a shit band, right? Ooh, interesting. Yes, you're right. What about Scar Tissue? I'm gonna keep going. <laughs> <laughs> what about Scar Tissue? Fuck there we that. are, right? What about oh that's not even a red chili pepper song. What about I Could Have Lied? Wait, no, go back to the last one, because that sounded interesting. Scar Tissue. No, the one that you said wasn't a Chili Peppers song. Dark Necessities. <laughs> <laughs> what, was, what was the one after, sorry? Scar Tissue. No, <laughs> after. <laughs> oh, right. Dark Necessities. And I don't know. Then what? That's by The Getaway. Yeah, but what was the most recent song you said? Scar tissue. <laughs> <laughs> right, later on, later on when you watch this back I'm and rewind sorry. and like you are you're gonna look a fool. <laughs> I, I don't mind looking like a fool. Look what I'm wearing. I'm wearing a bloody cloppy <laughs> sheet. I could have lied. By blood sex no, not by blood sex. It's on blood sex, sugar magic, sex magic, sugar, but it's by RHCP. I I can't remember how that one goes. But I, I have an idea right. how it goes badly so what about um airplane i think we totally spoke about airplane didn't we yeah i we did mention that before because i got really annoyed that dave navarro after doing such wonderful work in jane's addiction went on and did some shit with the chili peppers yeah what was i watching i was watching something on youtube the other day i had no idea dave navarro was in chili peppers for a while yeah it was just that that album what was it one hot minute or something one hot like minute that? yeah yeah yeah, I mean, what What's is... What's your favourite song? I'm going to see where it ranks. Uh, what's it called? Dosed. 
What? Toast. Dosed. Dosed. Yeah. I have not spelled that right. D O S C D. Oh, dosed. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, like I said. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's on um, that album. By the way. Yeah. 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 That sounds about right. I remember someone playing that album. Um, and I was just going, oh, for fuck's sake. Then this one song came on. And I went like, oh, that's quite nice. And then after it just descended into shite again and the thing is i don't actually know i don't actually know now if i actually do like that song or if it was just one of these the least shit thing and it was a moment of respite from the rest of it you know so actually i've gone on record there and said there is one chili pepper song i like and i might even be fucking lying no who's gonna look like a fool so uh, well i don't think i look like a fool you know i look like someone who's who's still learning as i grow so So um, I think what you need to do now is jump onto your music streaming platform of choice, Doug, and listen to that song again. Not now, later on, and give the Red Hot Chili Peppers some money by listening to that song. Okay, but let's check something before I do that, because I'm I'm interested to see how that would actually work out. So if I go on and look at the last thing I listened to. Uh, da, da, da. Is it going to be Roy Division? No, no, no. Uh, where are we? Um, last things I listened to. I don't know how to work these things anymore. It's because you're old. Actually, you're younger than me, aren't you? I'm 36. Yeah, you're younger than me. Uh, the last thing I listened to was Les Savvy Fab. Um, so, so actually, yeah. Um, if <laughs> so. So I won't end up listening to the Chili Peppers because I'll go, oh, let's have you fab. And I'll, I'll put that on. So, oh, good. You know, that'd be... And, and to be fair, like, you know, I I don't necessarily have any desire to revisit the Chili Peppers. I feel like they've fucking harassed me enough over the years. Um. Anyway, I'm not a fan. Um. And, you know, if, if people like them, then, you know, go for it. But, like... I didn't really, you know, I knew about the taste and the smell thing, but I didn't realise, like, your sense of hearing was fucked up by COVID enough I, as, as well to, like, suddenly start enjoying <laughs> that kind of bullshit. Uh, mate, I'm no, I just don't like them. I just don't again. like them. I'm not a fan. Gonna... And you know what? Me saying all this, it's not going to f- fucking hurt them one jot, is it? You know, no. like, they'll no. they'll sit there and go, like, oh, look at us with our millions. And, you know... Anthony Keyes was sat there going like, ha ha, look at me, I got away with being a paedophile and all of this kind of stuff, you know. So um, that's not an unsubstantiated claim. He actually wrote in his autobiography about how he had a sexual relationship with a 14 year old girl. So, you know, there's that. But it's all coming out today on this episode, isn't it? Yeah, well, you know, every now and then we've got to have a little bit of a release, don't we, John? <laughs> yes, well, it sounded like you could have a release on that bus into that story. Didn't <laughs> that's a crock of shite. It was, <laughs> or a crock of not shite. A crock of a, a crock of wind. A, <laughs> a deflating <laughs> balloon of musky scent. A deflating balloon of musky scent. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't sit well. <laughs> it did after it was done. Yeah, uh, I bet it did. Yeah. <laughs> For a good oh, five God. minutes. <laughs> I think I think the next time you appear on the episode as well on the podcast, I'm going to ask you again about Red, Red Hot Chili Peppers. Just let you know, I'm going to um, make it a bit more because it was. I've never seen you get so irate about something. You got so angry talking <laughs> about that. I don't know. I, I just, don't know what it is. Like it's just just some things. Like some things just get to me. You know, like I just couldn't help. I appreciate. Myself. I, I appreciate you were very, about. very, very hot, very calm in how you handled talking about jazz and uh and and I, I i then failed to live up to my side of the bargain um but yeah i just i'm just not a fan you know like that's and, fine yeah, yeah it is fine. it is fine in fact i think it's correct so you know well, i don't know I'm going that far, but it's fine not to like everything <laughs> everybody else likes otherwise how boring would it be if everything that everybody liked we liked 
well, it wouldn't it wouldn't be anything, would it? It wouldn't be a case of liking stuff. It would just be it would just be it. Yeah, the norm. Yeah. Um, oh, do you remember? Actually, do you remember the norm? There's two other things I wanted to talk about today. Do you remember the norm um, from late '90s, early '90s? Norm's the name. Do you remember him? He used to pop up with his with his ears stick out of his. Um, his ears sticking out of his hood. He used to have a hood up, and his ears used to stick out. He used to he used to have these really crazy looking teeth, and he would say, "Norm is a name." I don't know. If I literally have I dreamt that? Can you can you Google it for me? Because my keyboard's a bit loud. Because I I'm pretty sure that that was the thing when you said Norm. Then I just thought of that guy. I think no. he had like a a blue hood on with a red jacket. Oh. Is it a thing? It's a Twix <laughs> advert. Ah, okay. And I'm just going to try and find something out because he looks very much like someone and I can't think who. Or somebody that you know. No, no, no. Is that dad? Simon <laughs> Perry, right. What's his name? Simon Perry. Uh, oh, hang on. Wasn't, wasn't he a double act with somebody on Life and Kicking in the morning? No, that was Trev and Simon, wasn't it? Yeah, that's Trev and Simon. Oh, Shake Your Pants, yeah. wasn't it, they used to sing about? Yeah, Shake Your Pants. Um, they're uh, the... Um, laundrette shop they did um, where they would repeatedly say we don't do duvets uh, <laughs> oh they, they they did one where they were hairdressers and their names were Tim O'Tay and Alberto Balsam which was pretty good and they had a That's... record shop one where they used to talk shit about Richard Branson all the time call him the pickle man <laughs> um, <laughs> I yeah, don't remember that one. I do remember them. Uh, yeah, Simon Perry, apparently. He was on What's Up, Doc? Um, an anarchic and edgy Saturday morning entertainment show from the early to mid-90s, apparently. Oh, there we go. There so, we yeah. Go. Um, yes, so I, I I don't remember Norm, but, but now I will never forget him. Um, Good, I'm glad, because yeah. his character was an ugly-looking fucker. Um, yeah, yeah, he looked a bit like Lee Evans as well, but it wasn't Lee Evans. No, uh, no, no, no. Who, who also I am not a fan of, but I think we've had enough of that. Oh, oh <laughs> me, no, I will disagree. He's a fantastic entertainer and comedian. Uh, I liked him in Funny Bones, and I liked him in There's Something About Mary. Um, I'm not a fan of his stand-up. You you look deflated. You're not biting anymore now. You've had enough of red chili peppers, haven't you? That's it now. Yeah, there there are yeah. worse. I don't like Lee Evans. There are worse comedians. Michael okay. Fucking McIntyre. No, I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna leave it. Oh um, yeah, I dislike him too. Yeah, that's that makes sense. Should we have a dislike conversation about Michael McIntyre? I saw Michael McIntyre years and years ago before he got big. Um, it was funny then. And well, he had you know he was still doing that kind of like posh boy kind of shtick being very silly but some of the material was a bit I guess edgier maybe yeah. a bit bit yeah. less sort of like family radio friendly um and then he just launched himself into the big time um as this very kind of like family friendly observational comedian but I just I just found it really boring you know like there didn't seem to be any fucking creativity to it, it was you know it was more like he the thing with observational comedy is that you have to do it right if you look at the stuff that jasper carrot was doing in the 70s it's fucking incredible you know and yes. and that's what it was but observational comedy very often falls into this kind of camp of just being somebody saying something that you've already noticed yourself and if the whole punchline relies on the audience going like <laughs> you know you know i have noticed that then it's not good enough do you know what i mean it's it's yeah, not yeah. good enough it's yeah. It's just bollocks. Um, Stuart Lee has a has a whole bit on Michael McIntyre, which is which is absolutely really. Incredible. 
And I'm not gonna okay. I'm not gonna Something quote it. I'm not gonna quote it because you know, give Stuart Lee the money. Um it's, it's his but, bit but, at the end of the but, day. Yeah. yeah, but but look it up afterwards. I believe it's on the um if you'd like a milder comedian, please ask for one. Um okay. DVD that he put out. Um but yeah, he's got he's got a whole bit on McIntyre, which is very, very special. Um but yeah, I just I don't like that kind of fucking family friendly BBC bullshit comedy. It's just it's it's just fucking dumbing down the masses kind of fucking bullshit at the end of the day and making people giggle at things that aren't actually clever. And I don't I don't think it I don't think it paints comedy in a good light because it doesn't let it be seen as the the creative art form that it actually is. And I think people need to just fucking stop it, really. So you know, there's that. So you're you're, wait, my... you're waiting for me to explode. I know you are. No, 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 I'm not waiting for you to explode. I'm just letting you go, and you're getting more and more angry. <laughs> the look you gave me before we started talking about Michael Archetype was, I'm not going to rise to you, boy. <laughs> and then you did. Ha. So, uh, the, okay, yeah, uh, there is one comedian I really like to meet, Adam Buxton. Uh, I, I love Adam Buxton. I I've got watch... so much time for that man. I went to watch him a few years back. Um, my mate's the George comedy and I, uh, yeah, the comedy garden when he was doing the bug yeah. thing, but it was a special yeah. bug about David Bowie. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And he, uh, he sort of, it, it, obviously, it was just after, um, well, not just after, but shortly after David Bowie had died. Yeah. Um, and he came on stage and uh, uh, sort of opened with the line and said that, um, with a line sort of saying, uh, David Bowie's career had been through many different phases over time and I think we can all agree that this dead phase is the shittest one so far um, <laughs> but yeah I remember back in the back in the 90s I used to I used to stay up late on a Friday night um, and watch the Adam and Joe show yeah, yeah. Um, some absolute fucking on that. Shit, that. Yeah. Um, just I it, I think with Adam and Joe it was it was very silly you know oh, it yeah. was it was it was two men just being silly boys doing silly boy things but but with the 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 comedic ability of yes. of grown ups yes. um but they would just like interject stuff there was the there was one where they went to a bookshop and they were interviewing the people in the bookshop and asking them questions and stuff and at one point they went to the uh the new recommended books that week and he said to the girl who worked there and said like oh have you have you actually read any of these recommended books and she says no no I haven't actually yet and he just goes yeah books are boring aren't they and <laughs> you know it's just that that kind of that kind of silly stuff um that that I like um yeah, yeah. but I mean I, I like all forms of comedy you know there's there, there's always room for something I just I just don't like when it descends into banality and isn't particularly creative I think there's a lot out there to be explored you know I mean Buxton's particularly interesting because he it is observational comedy to a point I think and especially the sort of bug stuff but what he's doing is he's he's observing something and then he's disassembling it he's dismantling what he's seeing and and putting it across in a way that makes you look at it in a fresh light but it's always silly you know he's not putting any kind of particular deeper context into stuff a lot of the time um he's just making making morons on the internet look even more moronic which which makes that whole thing funnier yes absolutely so and he, he's great on eight out of ten cats does count on two whenever he's in dictionary corner again it's kind of like a mini bug but it, it just makes me howl and i'd listen to his podcast religiously um you know I, and i i re-listen to episodes i've watched I, i've listened to time and time and time and time and time again because they're just so re-listenable you know um yeah. and he he is just and I, I bought ramble book when it came out uh i bought the the, the physical copy and i bought the audio book mm. and just listening to him read his own book is is fantastic it's a brilliant experience a very very funny and quite sad book um but yeah i just got so much time for that guy and i i just i've wanted to meet him for a long time mm. i just think he could be somebody that i could sit down with and have a great conversation with yeah i think that i think but i, I bet you he doesn't are. hate red hot chili peppies peppies peppers <laughs> no one hates <laughs> red hot chili peppers. <laughs> um 
<laughs> the cover band. I mean, he might hate them. You never know. He, <laughs> you know, he might, he might, he might, you know, be sat somewhere going, like, listening to this, listening to this actual podcast, this vlog, and he might be sat there going, like, you know what? It's very interesting that 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 guy said that he'd really like to meet me because actually I fucking hate the chili peppers and I want to meet the other guy. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to meet the guy in white. I'm not going to meet the guy in white, <laughs> white jumper because he's just been right winded up, Doug, about yeah. the chili peppers. Yeah, he'll be sat there going, I fucking hate the chili peppers too. I, I, I'd I, like to meet Doug. And and frankly, I think that Roy Division joke on the T-shirt is utterly hilarious. So I think that's um, where he, it, I think that's where he lose it. Does he look at your T-shirt and go, oh, it's a shame I don't want to meet either of them. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, realistically, he's not listening, is he? No, um, never. <laughs> <laughs> And if you are, call in to this non-live, non-radio show. Um, that, but I, I oh, do want to that change the subject. Like when people do that, oh yeah, call into the radio show. Like, wh- why? Like, wh- like, I know people do it, but like always, just like whenever people call up, it's very rare that they have anything interesting to say. I used to always yeah. try and call Swansea Sound when I lived in Swansea. I want to have that car. They give away a car. I can't drive, but I, I, I want to win that car. It's not yeah. just the competitions and stuff. They say, like, oh, just call in and have a chat. You know, like a lot of the radio, the American radio shows and stuff. And I'm just always like, but what about? Like, what we just, you know. And whenever people, like, call in, they go, oh, what are you doing with your day? Oh, well, I just drop the kids off at school. Going to get some washing up done and, and you know, maybe, maybe, maybe have a well-earned rest. You sound right. a lot like Monty Python. Not all of them, but um, the oh, one yeah. from Life of Brian. Yeah, that was yeah. really good, I don't know if you were trying to do it it wasn't but... wasn't intentional i'm not going to oh, attempt to do well done, a deliberate mate. one now because it'll probably go all wrong you know <laughs> i can i can only do one impression um solid every time um is, it, is there a time frame in between those impressions is it like 37 days uh, <laughs> i don't know no the i mean the only impression that i've that i've worked out that i can do that i always get right um is um, Chief Wiggum from The Simpsons laugh, um, but but it's it's the only one I always get right. So if someone says like, "Oh, do your impression of such and such," I'm like, well, "I don't want to because it might go wrong this time," kind of thing. I once did Chief a really, I once did a really good impression of my dad, but that was quite a small small audience to entertain. Um, <laughs> hang on. <laughs> There what was that? That's Chief Wiggum's laugh. Oh, well done, mate. Yeah. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> 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 if I've lost that one now, fuck. There's no hope for you. No. Sorry. <laughs> I, once, I, once did a, I once did a perfect impression of Maynard from Tool singing, um, which, which, was, which was a really hilarious moment for me because... It was it was just after someone had uh, said to me like oh no one could sing like that guy and I just did it. <laughs> and, like, and, like, it was just sat there going like oh my god that that's incredible and I was like no it's not and now Maynard's not special. Um, oh, which was it that you were intimidated you were impersonated? Uh, did you song were you intimidated? Intimidated. <laughs> that's all what I song do. were you intimidated? Uh. <laughs> It was off the second Perfect Circle album. Uh, is it blue? Oh, is it... so you're talking murder noms? No. No, uh, 13th oh, Step. Yellow Slug. 13th Step, yeah. Yeah, Yellow yeah, Slug. Is it called Blue? Yeah, there, yeah, there is a song on that. 13th Step, a perfect, sorry about my keyboard sound, a perfect circle. Blue. Yes. It, and there, it's like... I'm more than just a little bit curious or something. Yeah, that's it. He says that in quite a lot of his songs, though. Yeah. Like, I'm more than just a little curious how you're planning to go oh. about and making okay. your now, amends. Now, I'm not doing the impression there. That's the noose, and I know that because I'm learning it on the bass. Is it? Okay, that's, that's, the, noose, that's the one. Yeah. yeah, that's the one I did. And for some reason, the time I did it, it came out sounding exactly like him. And it was quite a, quite a weird moment. You know those moments like where you like discover you can do something. <laughs> like that doesn't you... really happen with me. 
I, like, I, it's one of those weird things. Like, I'm, um, I'm double jointed in my shoulders, and I can wrap my arms right around my head and touch the ear on the side that the arm came from. Um, and there's got to be a day that I discovered I could do that and went, oh, I mean, I don't remember it now. But I think, you know, when you have those moments at the time, you're very like, oh, kind of thing. I think like the day I discovered I could I could kayak. That was that was one. I went kayaking on a on a on a friend's um on a friend's stag do one time and I'd never done it before. Um and my mate said like just do that motion but give not that motion, I'm in limited space here. But <laughs> he said just do this motion with your paddles. Were you um, in the kayak? And off you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was already oh, in water. Okay. You were, um, you were just sitting I, on sitting on tarmac. I, no, no. Um, and I just started doing it, and 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 turned out I was I was an absolute natural at it. So, to which a friend of mine, a, a friend of mine, um, uh, hilariously said I took to it like a dog to water, um, which I particularly like. Um, yeah, I do like a good pun, you know. Puns are good. Yeah, puns are fun. I do enjoy puns. I was trying to think of something I've just taken to naturally. I don't think there's been anything. There's most things that I do are an uphill fucking struggle. Um, like video engineering, audio engineering, all of that doesn't come naturally <laughs> the more I do it. It's even more, more difficult the more I do it. <laughs> so and maybe IT, I don't know. I don't know. Um, maybe it? music. I found that I, I have sort of when I did, when I was learning years and years and years and years ago, it took about nine months and I didn't, I couldn't play a single thing. And then on like 10 months and one day, I, it just clicked. Mm. So maybe that. I've been kayaking as well. That's not exactly very difficult, sorry to tell you, Doug. The, the most difficult bit there is not is trying not to fall out of the kayak, trying not to roll. Yeah, well, I didn't do that. So. Well done. You're amazing. <laughs> 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 and, I, and, I, and I got to the end of the river first, so. Oh, did you? Yeah, we were like, oh yeah, just you know, we'll all just sort of like go sort of alongside each other within reason, and you know, chat and that kind of thing. And I just got so into it that I just kept going. I just really enjoyed myself, I think. I went and pot once. I got I back. I got back because it was a mate stagged. I got back and I put the I put the kayak in. And the guy was like, and then I just started walking off. And the guy was like, you're not going to wait for your mate? So I was like, oh, I'll be back, but they're going to be ages yet. I'd got that cocky about it already. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I wandered I back down. I wandered back down and I was just sat there. Like, <laughs> I think I disappeared for about 25 minutes and then came back. And when I got back, it was another five minutes before they all sort of rounded the corner and, and came in so they all came back in all their like wetsuits and stuff and there was me like dressed in normal gear again stood there with a four pack of beers just like all right lads come on <laughs> let's Look get out the old pub. <laughs> you know? and they they were just like fucking hell man have you never done that before and i was like no you know it wasn't it wasn't like you know they were like oh you're amazing you're amazing or anything they were just you know they were quite surprised because of because of generally how utterly useless i am at most physical activities you know it's it's something it's nice to occasionally like find that I'm instantly good at something like that um I'm I'm good with water though I'm not like a great swimmer or anything but I won't drown like I'm but I like I like so being what you're trying to say is you can swim I yeah like I'm, most of the population <laughs> yeah but but I have quite big lips so <laughs> I don't know where you're going with this if I'm in anything that capsizes I operate as my own inflatable dinghy so you know I couldn't possibly go under at any point which is you know it's, it's really really helpful you know so you know, if, if I were to if if I were to be in a plane and the plane crashed at sea and I survived the crash, you know, and other people did, they would all probably drown, um, and die. Whereas I wouldn't drown, um, and I would you know float for a little while and then just succumb to pneumonia, and die instead, you know. But you know, my 
my tombstone would then say like you know bit of an outlier or something <laughs> yeah yeah so I, i'm going to entertain this for a bit you crazy bastard so right. how would this work so if you do right okay so you're a plane oh, yeah, i mean you've plane got crashes. Like that whoa 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 hang on let me set the scene, let me set the scene. <laughs> there's a lot we need to talk about with this because you've started this crazy meandering and i'm going to carry it on so the plane crashes. What plane is it? It's a Cessna. Good. We're going to go with a Cessna. Uh, I think that's the only one I know. Uh, plane crash. Wings detach. Plane skids across. Massive lake. Plane starts to not dissolve. Sink. That's it. Um, and you are left. Every dies. Instantly an impact. You don't because you go to headbutt the seat in front of you. But your lips being so big and full as they aren't, you hit the front of the table. Your lips save you. And then you swim outside of the aeroplane. Sorry, it's just getting a bit too crazy for you, you mentalist. And then you end up floating. So how do you float? Are you floating mouth down, breathing through your nose because your lips are so big and flumptuous, a lot like a rubber dinghy? Or are you on your back with all of you submerged in water with just your lips looking like a Mario pipe? So I'm sort of like straight down. Like my body's going straight down. Like, but my neck is on. Like a pencil. My neck is arched, so my face is sort of flat up, and the lips are protruding out, just sort of bobbing on top. Right, okay, I'm not entertaining that anymore. Um, great conversation, Doug. Thank you ever so much for talking about your voluptuous limbs. So, I, hang on, what gave you the impression first that your lips could save you? Don't hide them behind your moustache. <laughs> what, 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 <laughs> I can't just feel it off. I'll just remove yeah. this moustache. This has all been for comedy effect the whole time. I thought so. <laughs> so, so yeah, so what, what makes you think your lips are, for want of a better word, a life boy? Because they're... <laughs> they're Have I totally misunderstood this conversation? No, you know, like, when lips are, like, big, they're, like, they look like they're inflatable. Yes. Yeah. So that was, you know, that was the whole the whole joke. And just to let you know that initially it was a joke, what you've oh, done I think is I'm you've tried, so to, tried to, like, pull it into some kind of real-life scenario, which, which fair enough, you can, you can do that. No, no, of course not. I, I must have zoned out somewhere because I literally, I had no idea what you were talking about. And then you were talking about how buoyant your lips were and they would save your life if you crashed right. in an aeroplane. So that's what I was going lips, for. Man. I'm yeah. not the weird one in this situation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why would you, why, why would you, why would you, why would you ever think that that was serious? If I said like my lips can act as a, as an inflatable dinghy and I won't drown. You've met me, right? Yeah. But you've met me too. You, you, in fact, just over the course of this particular chat, like you should know that when I'm being genuine, I'm very fucking angry. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm still fixated on how angry you got with red hot chili peppers. But there is one thing. There is one thing hmm. that I do want to talk about, and I think I have revolutionised science. Okay. Right. I am fucking in. Go. <laughs> so, an hour and thirty-two, and it gets serious. You know, I was drinking quite heavily last night as it was Friday, and I do like to have a drink on a Friday. Mm -hmm. So this is what I came up with. You know how everyone is looking for life on other planets. Well, what if, wait for it, what if we are the only planet where life exists and every other planet in the solar system and greater universe is dead because... They've pretty much bugged up the planet. Discuss. Oh, right. OK, so in the sense that we are destroying our planet through global warming oh, and everybody and else is the same first. They've already done it before us. Well, I mean, oh, actually, you know, now okay. not right. on a, I'm not a science guy, but I like the <laughs> irony there, like the irony yes. of us getting into space. And to find dead planets. Acting like we're so advanced that we're going to find all these species nothing. and it turns out we are fucking millennia behind everybody. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. That's amazing. Yeah, I like that idea. Um, yeah. I, I believe in aliens. Um, so I hope you're wrong. But, um, you know, the, 
it, 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 there's definitely some level of possibility to it you know I mean I know we've been able to work out sort of like how planets have been over time you know like by sort of judging like how they change over a certain amount of years and that kind of thing we can see how far back they go but because we haven't found life on those planets we don't really have a way of establishing what what they would be like I mean it's quite interesting when you think about like somewhere like Mars which is basically on fucking fire you know what I mean yes. like, yes. and like sort of we go like so it must have got hotter every year in these increments but it may actually be that over a 100 year span they fucking ruined the place yes you know? this is what I'm thinking because what if we're looking at these planets and hoping there's life out there but what if we are the last experiment in a long line of other failed experiments mm. where every other planet has lived ultimately capitalism or something similar has taken over and everybody has then driven themselves over 200 years to get rich at the at the um what's the word at the detriment of the planet and the health of the planet so what if these planets we're looking at in the solar system aren't harboring life like in in frozen lakes and stuff but mm. what if they were live planets and now they're dead planets mm. it's well, interesting. I, I, I... <laughs> i'm not the guy that gives them out i told oh, sorry, you mate. every right, time that's... <laughs> um no I, I mean i do re i do really like the irony of it that we're that we're trying to advance ourselves and that that could become utterly pointless because i do i do enjoy a a a, a miserable irony um there's so something it's quite satisfying in this yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, what yeah. is it to say a, a, a pessimist is never disappointed um but but yeah, I, I quite like it as an idea. I like I say, I hope it's not true because I do believe in aliens and I would kind of quite like to you know, us to us to encounter them during my lifetime. So I think that's quite exciting. Um, I think so too. But, I mean NASA have picked up radio sequence uh, radio uh, sorry, no they haven't. They have picked up sounds, haven't they? Which have hit yeah. our satellites from the middle of, of the universe. Yes, and they've found uh the first proper planet outside of our solar system as well now which is which is pretty cool um too bad we would live to see it going with the <laughs> going with um your your theory though like those sound waves they've picked up um wouldn't it be it's really cool. funny if <laughs> if that was like a millions and millions of years old yes process? that was sent out with a bit of music like we've done in the last hundred years. <laughs> <laughs> and, we, and we listen to it, right? And we listen to it, and then we decide all aliens are cunts because it sounds just like the fucking Chili Peppers. <laughs> what if it is the other side, the song, the other side, or Scar Tissue? Or surely surely, 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 aliens, surely if it was other side, that would have to be like an alternative reality or like an afterlife or something like that that couldn't be you know the other side of the universe because the universe is infinitely expanding and doesn't really have edges you know well i so, don't know i i i i mean i, actually, like I mean the truth, the truth is that we are in lisa simpson's science experiment still obviously but you know let's you know let's play devil's advocate and suggest we're not but the, the universe is ever expanding right yes outwards yeah so so where's the sides the sides are on the outside but it's getting bigger so the... still gonna have sides but, uh... otherwise we just otherwise you think of it like a fish tank that's why i like to think about it it's a fish tank all the solar system inside is inside the fish tank there are outer walls where we can only grow so big but the inside you can you can absorb the same amount of space as a fish tank and I will caveat this and say I am a bit of a science guy um, in so much that I am in IT and I've been in IT for 20 years, but I failed every other exam I've ever done. So I'm probably not the best person to be trying to explain this to you because I probably will get it wrong. But I do think I'm right. I see, I see what you mean about the sides. OK, yes. they, they've got to be there, but they are constantly shifting. OK, yes. that's that's fine. Um, much more elegant way to put it. But my point stands that would 
something still be on the other side of the universe if the universe has expanded since that was a thing? So that if the planets are staying in the same place, yes, then you know there's got to come a point where everything in the universe expands to such a level that we're all just in the middle together. Isn't that isn't that what I just explained with John's fish tank theory? Yeah, basically, but it would mean yes. it's not from the other side. It's, it means it's from like just over there, you know. Yes. Also, 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 it's very hard to work out where these sides are because I do know for a fact um, that we live in an infinitely centered universe. So that would make it very difficult to to um, work out where the sides were as well. But also. That's a good comeback uh, if anybody ever says um, not everything revolves around you. I'm you could so. just say, oh, actually, we live in an infinitely centered universe. And what, and what is one of those? It means that we're in the center. Yeah, at all times. Yeah. So, good. you know. And, uh, and may I say that that had quite a lot of Red Hot Chili Peppers other side references laced through it as well. You said the word other side about four times. Right. I mean, that's not a reference. That's that's using words in different context. Well, that's oh, not, sure that's, that's not a thing. I mean, it's definitely a thing, isn't it? OK. Because, so. you know, like. Yeah, when I talk about like, you know, a mate of mine who's a bit, you know, he's a bit of a cheeky boy. Like, I mean, oh, he's a bit of a cunt, you know, like, whereas if I talk about Anthony Kiedis, I'll be like, he's a cunt. You know, that's the same word, different context, you know. Yeah, well done. That's good. So, is this the sweariest I've been on one of these so far? I oh, don't know. I'm the angriest. And I've have I had, it have I had little minute. lulls that, that even it out? Uh, normally, you come on and you, you, the past few episodes, you've been really informative and people have really enjoyed listening to your episodes. <laughs> you saying that people are not going to enjoy <laughs> listening to me lose my fucking <laughs> shit. Well, plus I've been goaded you. I, 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 I think we're in for a bit of a turn. Right. I think I think I think my opinions on the Chili Peppers are going to gain you fans. <laughs> well, if there is, if that does happen, I hope somebody will write a review. because we have got two reviews, one written and one five star. I would hope that somebody would write a review to say Doug is right. I hate RHCP and FYI, I'm now a fan of your podcast. Oh, God, I didn't know. You, I didn't know I've been reviews. I'm going to have to have a look at them. Um <laughs> Oh Jesus! Yes, what, yeah, yeah. We, we, we what if it was? What if it was Flea? <laughs> what if he did the review? Imagine if he did as well, and he was just like, "Oh, he's right, you know." <laughs> I've just been fucking around for years. I quite enjoyed being in them Back to the Future movies. That was fun. Yeah, it was good in that. I did enjoy those movies. Um, I do want to see a real life Rick and Morty. What? A rock like a live action? Yeah version of yeah well i mean i right i think yeah because obviously there's a there's a dot brown kind of vibe there isn't there yeah well he did do a little excerpt didn't he with this other actor oh yeah yeah of course yeah yeah Yeah, that was that was i thought that was quite fun i mean here we go yeah (laughs) it could be really good if if not christopher lloyd who else though? I mean, Larry David, or is he a bit too dry? I, he's a bit too dry. I mean, Christopher Lloyd, I love that guy, but you could genuinely believe that the man is insane. As in, from a scientific insanity, do you know what I mean? Mm. Like a proper crazy doc- doctor. Yeah. Um, well, when he was in um, Taxi back in the 70s, and he plays Reverend, Reverend yeah. Jim, uh, he was absolutely mental in that you know he was obviously like a sort of like you know had too much acid over the years completely lost the plot kind of character so he can do that kind of madness you know as long as he's got the the ability to talk science which obviously we've seen him do in other films yeah yeah Yeah, it could work i suppose what about lars henriksen Mm. he's got like a doc brown fight doesn't he at times in maybe a couple of things, but I think he'd be a bit too sinister. That could be a good thing, because Rick is sinister. Yeah, but there's a, there's a side to him, isn't there, you know? 
Yeah, I think so. Um, who else could we could we do? Um, Christopher Lloyd. I'm still sticking with Lars Henriksen. Um, I think it's a hard one. What about Morty, though? Who are you going to cast as Morty? Oh, now that's even more difficult because you've got to find somebody who is passive, slightly aggressive, but in the most passive way. Oh, what about you? No? Okay. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. That's not a very nice, Doug, for the, <laughs> for the audio version. Doug, just flick me the bird. Um, so That's one of the nicer things I've talked on today. On this podcast, <laughs> yes, it is. Um, I, at this point, I don't think we've got any listeners just going to say, an hour and 44 in, everybody's dropped off around about the seven-minute mark when you were talking about your poo. Um, so, <laughs> so, so, or the poo that did not happen. It's a bit like the Metallica song, the, wasn't it? The thing that never failed or something i've just bugged that up um who could play morty i'm gonna google it who is a good morty actor because i genuinely oh ah no okay i don't know if i should say this michael j fox but in the back of the future era small slight um soft-spoken don't know i'm trying to think of something where i've seen Michael J. Fox, where he's been genuinely narcissistic, because that's what you kind of need. Okay, here we go. Yeah. So here is a website, cbr.com, for a Morty, a Rick and Morty live action movie, the top 10 actors that could play Rick and Morty, right? Number 10, right. Peter Capaldi playing Rick. That's interesting, actually. That's not a bad shout. Number nine. Playing Morty, Jaden Martell. I've not heard of this gentleman. Really? Um, I think this is the guy that appeared alongside Christopher Lloyd in the live action, um, in that little excerpt intro thing that we had from there. Um, number right. eight, Chloe Grace Moretz could play Summer. I think that could. That could uh, I, I can. I could see that. Yeah. Yeah. Number seven, Sarah Chalk's already Beth, so there's no point moving that. Uh, but um, I think, you know, there are alternatives you could use in that scenario, you know. Because no. Alicia Silverstone could do a good job oh. at Beth. Yes, I think from my point of view, I've, I've got used to Sarah Chalk's voice. Yeah, and that's fine, you know, but... It's whether the or same not... could be said for Rick, though, couldn't it? You get used to... Well, that's to, the thing. Get... You know, yeah. you could just say, like, why not cast the, the voice actors? I mean... Yeah, exactly. What know. about this one? This, I think, is a good one. Number six is Toby Maguire that could play Jerry. Because Toby Maguire is short, and he's a whiny little bitch. And he's in his 50s now. He's not in his 50s, is he? Yeah, uh, I've just made that up, but I think he is. Let's Google him. 40s, I believe. Oh, I think but so. 50s seems a bit... Oh, you're right, 46. <laughs> yes, hey. Seabiscuit. Um... <laughs> Number five is that Justin Rolliland, the person behind the voice yeah, of yeah, it, yeah. could play Mr. Poopy Buttle. <laughs> <laughs> Well, as we've established, that's a role that I'd fail the audition for. So... <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Mr. Windy Metal. It's, it's weird stuff like this, because you sit there and you go like, oh, that's who I'd imagine, that's who I'd imagine, that kind of thing. Like, but then, like, imagine, like, if you were, like, given that job and you cast all these people and you put them together and then it was a pile of shit. <laughs> Do oh, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. But that's just, happened before with loads of films, isn't it? A-list actors have been put together in these massive blockbusters, and they've mm. gone nowhere. Yeah. I can't think of one, but I know there are a few. Batman and Robin. Batman and Robin, yeah. No, no I did um, like... Apparently, uh, George Clooney, if you uh, meet him um, and you tell him that you saw Batman and Robin in the cinema, he actually refunds people on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> just give you 10 bucks like, that's pretty cool like 
I mean, he admits that that was a shit film. But the thing is, I mean, I, I think that's a testament to George Clooney that he's, you know, just so... He's a great actor, but also so fucking charming and so fucking good looking that, like, when he was stepping away from television, the first couple of things he did of note were from dusk till dawn. That's a risky movie to try and launch a Hollywood career off of. And then the next thing he did was a Batman movie that was such a fucking flop that it could have derailed everybody in its careers. Yet... He still became one of the most successful fucking actors in Hollywood. I mean, fair play to him. Well, yeah, also, he's, I mean, he's, he's also in Out, Out of Sight, which is amazing, obviously. Um, oh, you should, it's a Steven Soderbergh one. Um, it's fucking great. Um, and exists in the same world as Jackie Brown, interestingly enough. Oh, I've not seen that either. Oh, right. Well, there's your, there's your homework. Um, Good. Thanks, mate. So, four out of ten, right? Dan Harmon, the creator or yeah. co-creator of Rick and Morty, and to play a third person. Okay. See, I don't really get that. Third person should be uh, John C. McGinley, as in Dr. Cox from Scrubs. Because oh, he's felt like fuck yes. and he doesn't mind doing something a bit stupid. Did you watch the TV show he was in? On Sam vs. Evil. Yeah. Yeah, I loved it. That was really good, wasn't it? Only a bit, bit annoyed that it got axed. No, it's three in the yeah. end. Oh, was it? Yeah, oh, but it, it, they, were all, they were all short. But um, it was it was on at the same time as Ash vs. Evil Dead, which oh, okay. I also really liked. Um, yeah, that was brilliant. Fantastic. I think, I think people were a bit like, oh, it's a rip-off of. But I think it was kind of doing its own thing. It was in the same kind of idea, but it... It was getting on and doing its own thing, and it was very fucking good, and it was really fucking funny. And then they it both was. they they both got cancelled after three seasons, and it was. Oh no, Ash was four. Time. No, it was three. It was three. Pre- was it three? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Really? I could have yeah. sworn that was four. Yes, yeah, three. Wow, because I I really loved that because everything it had this proper Evil Dead um uh proper oh. What do we call it? Um, it had this proper. Yes, yeah, like I told you, mate. Three seasons. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't have it. You, you said it was four. I told you three. You wouldn't have it. It had this real proper. Because if you find a TV show goes from a, from a film to a TV show, mm. what I really hate is I hate when that TV show doesn't live up to the film. They don't have the same enemies. They don't have the same sort of character stylings. Ash versus Evil Dead did. The Evil yeah, Dead yeah. would looked fantastic. Lucy Lawless was brilliant in it. Yeah, she was. The, um, exactly. His two his two sidekicks were phenomenally funny as well. Mm. It was a really well written script with really good action, but it still had that cheesiness that you had in the original films. I think yeah. it goes. I think it goes together really well. Really, really well. I thought it was really good. I really enjoyed it. It's, I mean, it's a shame that it got axed, but I think it, it was a miracle it that it got on TV in the first place. In some ways, but well, it shows that people still want to watch old school horror. Yeah, and I think I think that's becoming more and more evident. You know, um, obviously there has to be a new wave of horror, but I think a lot of the, the the people making horror movies at the moment that are good um, kind of understand the old school enough for it to work. So Ty West, who um, did House of the Devil, which is a real sort of throwback to like 70s and 80s style horror. Um, okay. Ari Aster, who did Hereditary and Midsummer. Um, Midsummer really like taps into that sort of like classic folk horror thing. You know, a lot of people have compared it to The Wicker Man, and I don't think it's like The Wicker Man, but it's coming from that kind of genre that, that, that people, people are fans of. And, you know, I think that's cool. So, yeah, I think people do like that kind of thing. There's a, you know, maybe some younger people find it harder to watch the old stuff because it looks dated nowadays. But like, you know, if you if you make a classic style slasher movie or something now, as long as you do it well, I think people would just fucking dig it. You know, they'd be all over it. You know, they as long would. as you do it well, the people would just be like, "Oh, this is so fucking cool." Do you know what I mean? I mean, like, look at Scream. Scream that came back when Hacker, when well, a Hacker, when a hat slasher movies were all but dead. People well, thought they were. 
Scream was clever, wasn't it? Because because Wes Craven had kind of popularized the slasher movie in the 80s when he'd done yeah. Nightmare on Elm Street. So when he did Scream, which was so successful, it, was, it launched New Line yeah. Cinema. It was it was almost as if he was going like, OK, so I did this and people have taken what I've done and they've run it into the fucking ground. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fucking dissect it and I'm going to satirize my own genre. And he did it. And then the teen slasher became a thing. Like, yeah, yeah. you know, so it's like twice, twice. Wes was like, oh, I'm bored of this. I'm going to sort some shit out. And then the people ran off with that again and did it a second time. Like after that, he must have been going, like, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> I was taking a piss yeah. out of you lot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, they, they were great films, even though they were taking, you know, they people who should take the piss out of them, they were really good. And it had that suspense, which I thought horror had lost. Because mm. a part of what horror makes horror scary is to me is not the jump, it's the suspense trailing through, you know? Yeah. So with um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, for example, like mm. it's very okay. tense because it's so claustrophobic. You can almost yes. feel how hot it is and how little water there is um and it, there's, there's a real kind of like oppressiveness to the film and there's actually very little on-screen violence and not much that's particularly gory in it um but it but people when they talk about texas chainsaw massacre talk about all this stuff that's not even in the movie and i think i think it's testament to a good horror movie that it makes you think you've seen things that you did not see because it it has terrified you and had that much of an effect on you do you know what yeah. i mean like yeah. you know people seem to think that they saw like 500 people get sliced up with a chainsaw and it, it didn't happen you know it no, didn't happen it's like at four all. isn't it or five <laughs> i think it's, it's less than that to be fair yeah. like the second one fucking goes ham in on it and and absolutely should have you know that, that was fucking great like because you know the second one is just kind of like how do we how do we do a sequel to it? All right, let's be fucking ridiculous. Let's get yeah. Dennis Hopper in as a policeman in a cowboy hat. Let's <laughs> fucking oh yes, I remember everything that. up. Yeah, and it, it works really well. You know, it is it is fucking great. Um, but yeah, the first one there's 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 not a lot on screen on it, but it creates such an atmosphere that people watch it and go. I think I saw something there and you didn't, yeah. you know, and I think, I think that's great, you know, tension and, you know, being able to sort of build any kind of level of suspense and creating that kind of oppressive atmosphere that, that makes people think they'd, uh, they'd seen th things that they hadn't is, is a real talent. Um, probably have to stop in a minute cause we're about to reach the two hour mark, I think. Um, yeah. but I, quickly as we're on films a little while back, in fact, during lockdown, I had this uh, experience. Um, so let's go back to the origin. I must have been a kid, uh, probably somewhere between the age of five and ten. Uh, and we were around my grandparents' house and there was a film on the television. Uh, and there were a couple of moments in it that just stuck with me forever. Um, one moment was somebody being strangled. No, not being strangled. Um, so a, 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 there's someone in a house and they walk around the corner and then they see someone who's been hung from a light fitting. Right. And then there's a man with no top who appears at the top of the stairs holding a belt in his hand. Um, and that to me was just terrifying at the time. I, I couldn't, I was just really scared by it. And it kind of like haunted me for a while. And there's another moment at the, somewhere else in the film, maybe towards the end where someone gets mauled and eaten by dogs. Um, now, the bit about the dogs didn't scare me at all or anything like that, but that was kind of like another part of the film that I remembered. And for years, I was trying to find out um, what what it was about, um, or what the film was. Like, because, you know, it just gets to a point where you're like, I need to rewatch that to, like, get rid of that fucking fear. If I know yeah. what it is, you know. Um, well, I didn't know for years. And during lockdown, I found out. Really? Yeah, so I sat down during lockdown and I watched it. And the film is called The Boys from Brazil. It's, um, turns out, it's not even a horror. It's oh. um, a, a, a sort of sci-fi thriller, but not much real sci-fi going on. Um, it's uh, it, it, it's kind of a, a, a post-World War II. Uh, and basically... Um, it's discovered that there are loads and loads of little Nazi clones. Oh. 
like little like Hitler clones. Like they they've created a load of uh, a load of like kids um, from uh, Hitler's DNA, and they're all basically just running around the place. And there's a big plan to to have like a, a basically a Nazi revival and takeover. Um, so what I was terrified of for years and years, thinking it was a horror movie, it turned out to be the most ridiculous film I have ever seen. And to bring it back to a point from earlier, it starred the um, the main man from four Police Academy movies, Steve Gutenberg, um, <laughs> as well as um, Gregory Peck and Sir Lawrence oh, fucking Olivier. Gregory Peck, what an actor. Yeah, man. Maybe you can help me with a film that I saw, because you're, you're a film buff, I am not. I mm. like my horror, I like my, my gore movies. Um, but I, I would never call myself a, a, a film buff. Yeah. When I was younger, and there's a lot to pick uh, what I'm about to say, right? There's a lot to handpick from this. Don't Let's not handpick it here. Um, <laughs> but, okay. Um, when I was, my parents got divorced when I was younger, and there were a few times where I used to go over my dad's flat on a Saturday. You know, this was like, uh, he'd have me for a few hours there. And there were two films that he put on TV for me. The first film, I, w- I was I was seven, eight, at the, by the way. The first film was Robocop. Yep. The second that's, one... That's one that had a shit TV series. I I enjoyed it, I, but let's not unpick that. I enjoyed the TV series. It was it was bad, it was bad, but I enjoyed it because I just want more Robocop. There's not been... I think the thing with Robocop, there hasn't been enough done with it. And because of that, I love it more than probably a lot of films because uh, it hasn't been milked anyway yeah. so okay. so there was a second film now the memories i've got from this film, i've tried to find this film and i can't find it anywhere and a lot like you from what you were saying i want to just sit down and watch it and mm-hmm. it's probably something which isn't as bad as it sounds it was a werewolf film what i remember is there is a, a weird sort of gothically styled house in the film Right. There are people, there's a man who brings out black bags. It, it's quite bitty, so it's not going to make much sense. There's a guy that brings out black bags and put black, put, puts black bags on the floor outside, ready for the, the rubbish collection. But the bit that sticks with me the most is at the end of the film, a werewolf jumps through a banister, gets staked in the heart with a wooden banister, and lands on the floor downstairs... And uh, as he's turning back into a human, you get to see the transformation of him, of him turning back. And obviously, when he when he does turn back, he is dead. Now, I don't know what this film is. I know I remember this because I've spoken to other people about it and they're like, mate, I don't think this film exists, but I know I've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> and I've tried. I thought it was the howling for a long time. I thought it was, you know, uh, like, uh, um, uh, what's it? American Werewolf in Paris and whatever. I can't seem to find this film anywhere. I don't know what it's called. I don't know who stars in it. I mean, we are talking almost 30 years ago. Was it like an 80s? Yes, what it would have been. It would have been about 92, 93, I think. No, 92, yeah, 92, 93. I would have been around there, so it would have been probably an 80s film. But the bit that sticks with me is the werewolf gets speared by the the banister as he jumps through it. Um, and I've tried looking for that particular phrase on Google, and I can't find it anywhere. I have no idea what this film is. Are you sure it's a steak and not a silver bullet? Because it could be silver bullet. What, the yeah, the Stephen King one. Because at the end of that, uh, the werewolf smashes inside a house. Yes. And like, like, and they, they there's a bit of a thing, but it gets shot with a silver bullet instead of being staked. I mean, maybe, may maybe my my brain has turned it. If this is it, I'm. There's going like a, to there's like a, the there's house. like a, a, a little kid in it who's like paraplegic, like in a wheelchair. Let's look at some of these images. I need to see. But I remember it was insanely gory. 
And I met, you know, mum talks to me about it quite a lot because it gave me nightmares for weeks. <laughs> I, mean, I was eight or seven. Do you know what I mean? Watching something which essentially could have been a Stephen King film. And I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know, mate. 1985. I mean, it could have been, right? I'm going to have to find out. Gary Busey's in it. Um, it may have been. But I seem to remember he was running on a landing and there was uh you know it's quite a big house so you've got a huge staircase up one of the sides yeah. and then you know the landing he sort of careers through the landing and then you have like an open plan downstairs area and that's where the werewolf lands and i seem to remember him sort of pushing himself away up to a wall until he sits up against the wall a lot like i'm sitting now um and but there's a, a stake in him where he just he turns back into a human that that's what i remember and i can't for the life of me it may be this. I'm going to have to watch this one later. See if it is. Yeah. It, I, that, that's what it sounds like to me. But I, I you know, I obviously it's not 100 Good start, mate. But, um, yeah. If I, if, if I think of any others, then... Yeah, give fact, me a shout. In fact, in fact, the start of the next one will either be you telling me I was wrong or right. So. <laughs> yeah, let's do that then. Okay, yeah, that sounds like a plan. I'll, I'll find it. It's going to be on iTunes or something. I'll, I'll yeah. buy it and I'll watch it. I'll watch it and uh, I'll tell you whether you were right or wrong. Yeah. All oh, right. Now, now you've got to get one of those um, to be continued graphics to put on at the end of the video. So. <laughs> I, I think. We, and, I, and, and for for anyone who's listening on the the, the podcast version, um, yeah. To be continued. <laughs> <laughs> All right, mate. Cheers, Doug. No worries. Catch you soon, mate. Take care.